So putting it all together. So this is how. Well, this is what we're going to do today. We've been doing this for three weeks now. You all have seen some great models, some great concepts, some great frameworks that will help you uh, not only have better conversations and presentations, but just help make your overall communication better so that you become an exceptional communicator. Now, we're going to put it all, put it all start putting it all together. I'm going to pull up some of these models. We're going to go through them uh, just to make sure we're all in the same place and that we're all up to speed on these things, but also so that you are not leaving here uh, with this training and not able to implement it in real time. That's the key. Learning something is one thing, but being able to implement it and use it in real time is, is extremely important. It's not about accumulation. It's about uh, implementation or application of the knowledge that you learned. Of course, I gave you all Dunkin' Nugget a few weeks ago, Dunkin' Nugget number 19. Knowledge is power if you actually use it, all right? So let's go ahead and start putting all this stuff together right here. Oh, yeah. If people are popping, this is great. OK, good. So here we are. Here are the three words. If I look at this right here, we got connect, adapt and engage. These are the three, these are the three main concepts that we talked to you all about. The secret sauce for all great communication, right, is connection. It's connection. If if you don't connect with the listener, the reader, whoever the receiver is, it's very hard to get your point, get your message across. It's very hard to engage in a meaningful conversation to establish value and things of this nature, right? So connection is the key, right? And, and along with that, if people say, what's the most important communication style? We always say, well, it doesn't matter what your personality is. If you're quiet, outgoing, you're laid back, reserved, introvert, extrovert, all of that, it doesn't even matter. The best the thing that matters most is, can you adapt? Can you figure out a way to bring what you do the best, whatever that is? Everybody has strengths, right? So we focus on your strengths. We manage your weaknesses. But can you adapt that? And then can you engage? Nobody likes being held hostage. I don't care if it is a long, drawn-out email, if it is a boring cover letter or a boring presentation or a PowerPoint with too many words on the screen, anything along those lines. We like to be engaged. Don't strive for perfection, strive for connection. That's the main thing. You don't have to be the perfect conversationalist or the perfect presenter or have a perfect interview. If you connect with the person and you really find a, find a way to resonate with what they are looking for or what your audience is looking for, I guarantee you, you will uh, the conversation will be much stronger. The presentation will be much stronger. You'll have a much higher likelihood of attaining the results you're looking for, right? So here go to connect, Connection Commandments. Deborah said these a few times. I appreciate it. That number one is know your listener. You got to know the listener. Who's listening? What does he or she want? Their needs, wants, and desires, their likes, their pain points, their, their interests, and things of that nature. Okay, so we have to make sure that we understand exactly who our listeners are. Uh, side note, real quick, uh, housekeeping, please mute yourself. It, you know, let me come over here. Dr. Lee, can you, let me see if we can mute everybody real quick. I just hear a few things every now and then. I should have did this before we get started. Okay, I got it. I'm muting everybody. However, if you want to talk, you will, uh, uh, you will be able to unmute yourself, okay? All right, so uh, when I say your listener, that's also the receiver. I'm very careful. Because it's easy when you start talking about communication for people to start focusing on speaking and conversations and only presentations. The receiver, the, 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 this could this easily be an email or a resume or a cover letter or a report, you know, anything along those lines. All right. So it's the receiver. Know who's getting the message that you're trying to trying to convey. Uh, the other one is know yourself. You're the sender. Know yourself. And where I hear we always say. Focus on your strengths, manage your weaknesses. So you really want to do what you do best. If you love facts and figures and you can make them interesting, then use them. If you like telling stories, then use them. If you like playing games and activities, then use them. If you have strong eye contact, you got a nice uh, engaging personality, then use it. If you're quiet and soft-spoken, that's fine too. That's no, there's nothing wrong with that. Then, then you can learn how to lean in or you can learn how to make more poignant statements or things along this line. It has nothing to do with personality right here. This has to do with, do I know who I am and how to bring the best of me out when I'm giving a presentation or I'm engaged in a conversation? The other thing, of course, is know the context. You got to know the context. It changes everything. As a matter of fact, symbols and experiences don't have meaning unless people give them meaning. That's it. Dr. Lee, I was laughing last night. She was talking about one of the most exciting things on earth. She said, it's not exciting for me. She said, a soccer game. She said, it's not exciting for me. It's the most popular sport in the world, played by the most people in the world. Uh, you get 80,000, 100,000 people in the stadium playing soccer sometimes. She said, that is not exciting for me. Why? That doesn't have meaning for her. Uh, we talked to you about emojis and how they can get uh, misconstrued, even though they're trying to convey emotions and things of this nature. I told you all a quick story about the young lady who got a thumbs up from her manager and was not happy about it because it didn't mean to her, to her what, what the manager thought it was going to mean. So just keep that in mind. Symbols and experiences 
don't have meaning unless people give them meaning. That's why context is so important. When you're a master of the context, then your presentations, your conversations will go a lot better, okay? Next thing is um, the best communication style to have. I don't care if you're outgoing communication style or what your Myers-Briggs said and all this other stuff. I'm trying to tell you, the best communication style is adaptable. That, that, that should be your style. Whatever you do, whatever your personality traits are, as we're bringing out your strengths and managing your weaknesses, it's, it's got to be wrapped around this uh, this whole concept of being adaptable. So it helps to strengthen the connection between the sender and the receiver by minimizing the impact of mistakes, okay, uh, clearing up misunderstandings, and, of course, uncovering intentions and explanations. Now, when I say adaptable, it doesn't matter. So if you're sending an uh, instant message, if you're if you IM with somebody back and forth because your company uses Skype or something along those lines or y'all on Facebook or whatever, right, and and, and something seems like it's getting lost in, lost in translation, all right, so the adaptable communicator, the, the adaptable communicator immediately says, hey, hold on, hold on. Do you have a few minutes? Can we hop on the phone real quick? Can we hop on Zoom? Can, you know, can we get on video? Can, get, can we do something? Can we go on WebEx? I don't care. What is it? Google Meet Teams? Can, can we do something? Or can we meet next week? Can we can we meet for lunch? Some, something uh, to help you adapt to the situation so that you are uh, getting your point across and making sure that the conversation or the presentation goes well. So please, when I say adaptable, that's not just for the front of the room. That is in any type of communication you have. If, it's, if you're not attaining the results, or, or if anything gets fuzzy, what do you mean by fuzzy? I, I mean, if anywhere in here, you realize maybe I didn't know who I was talking to as much. Uh, maybe I'm a little confused about what I should do in this situation. Or you know what? I thought this was one thing, but it's another. Then what you need to do is you need to adapt. Okay? That's what we are. Helps to minimize the impact of mistakes, clears up misunderstandings, and it uncovers intentions and explanations. Changements, as we used to call them. They happen all the time. All right. Uh, here go the five soft skills clusters. This is the main one that we're focused on right now is communication. That's the ability to send and receive clear messages. But of course, all of that affects your decision making and your problem solving, helps you to recognize, create, and choose effective options and solutions, your teamwork and collaboration. That is, do, can you work with others? This is the number one. A most desired trait in entry-level professionals. Matter of fact, I, I'm not even going to say entry-level. When they when they actually did the research, they found out it is for anybody, especially that's new coming into an, uh, a new work situation or even long-term. They're just like, please, can you work with us without disrupting everything? Can you work with, can you get along with folks some type of way, all right? So now the other one is self-management and professionalism. Uh, that is just, this is about you personally. Just do you demonstrate the behaviors and character traits that you need to demonstrate in order to achieve these outcomes? That's on par, uh, not with the average standards, the highest standards of your role of position. And of course, the ability to What's inspire the me for a great presentation. You all know, and let me know in the chat. Real quick, tell me some of the things that you need to have a great presentation, like some things that we that we need to let you know or some things that need to be present in order for you to uh, have a great presentation. Anybody? I don't care. You can unmute yourself even if you want to talk about it. Uh, let's see. You need valid information. Yes, please. Do you want to you want to get your presentation messed up? Start start giving the presentation. Everybody's like every word coming out of your mouth is wrong. Not cool at all. Knowing the material. Thank you very much, Greg. Some people gloss over this so much. This is part of knowing yourself. You, you are the material you want to train on is part of knowing you. How, I have seen people fumble and fiddle faddle over the stuff because you don't even know your own doggone presentation, man. Know your material. I agree with that wholeheartedly. Uh, tomorrow, know the context for sure. Please, some stuff is funny in one context, another context is not. Sometimes it's boring in this context, sometimes in other context is not. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Uh, relevant information from Gregory, yep, got to be relevant. This is called provide a valuable destination. You can, have the, you can have the best presentation in the world. If it is not valuable to the person, then it's just not valuable to him or her. And you know what? That's not even, a, that's not even necessarily it depending on who showed up where and why they ended up in your presentation. That's not even necessarily any type of judgment on you. Sometimes I have seen people end up in a presentation where you're like, you know what? This is not for me. Like this. if I showed up in a presentation on, I, I don't know, for, for, for molecular biologists, I don't care how great that presentation is, man. At a certain point in time, I'm going to be like, this is not for me. I, I'm going to be lost in the information and I, I won't really get it. It's not valuable for me. It's not a valuable destination for me. That has nothing to do with the skills of the presenter or the value of the actual information for other folks. Value is subjective. Just keep that in mind. 
So when I say provide them a valuable destination, that means you got to know the listener. All right. Uh, Greg says engagement, connection. Yes. Asking questions, stories relevant to what you're teaching. I like this boy, Greg. You, you, you got the assignment, man. You give me back all my stuff. <laughs> I like that. Thank you. All right. Good. Don't put too much info on your slides. This is a big one. So to me, and and I'm gonna stop here for a second for y'all for all my STEM folks, man. Cause I, I well, when I come over here in the, in the scientific community, the math community, you know, or, or where, depending on where I'm dealing, if I'm dealing with a bunch of engineers and stuff like that, boy, I look at these. I was like, good God of my, did, did, did do you need? Can you find some more space on there? Can, you, I don't think you got enough words on there, man. I think you you going for the Guinness Book of World Records. How many words can you put on one slide? Right, too much info on the slide, or your font is too small. Not cool. That's going to definitely jam up your presentation. If, first of all, real quickly, some of you all have, some of you all know this, so it'll be good review for you. Knowledge is power if you use it. Okay, <laughs> right. Uh, some of you don't know this, so let's break it down for you real quickly. That you, you all asked me about this last week, so I went and got it. We went and found our presentation on the Star Method, and I put those slides in here for you. All right, so here we go. The S stands for situational scenario. Describe the situation. What was going on? Who was involved? Let's watch these questions. I'm saying so. But saying member of a student organization, that didn't tell me what was going on. That didn't tell me who was involved. That didn't tell me where it took place. That didn't tell me when it happened. There's a lot of there's a lot more information that could be there, right? So what was going on? Who was involved? Where did it take place? When did it happen? Those are some examples. How did you? How did they feel? That's another good thing. You know, we were under a great deal of stress or they were extremely happy and pleased. Uh, you know, one day we were all we had a great project. We had a product to work on uh, in physics. Right. All of us were stressed because finals were coming up. That's great. So you're describing the situation in the scenario. Right. Here we go. The next thing is the task. Describe the task. What was your job? Like, what are you supposed to do? What were you working on? What were you supposed to accomplish? OK, the next one. Action. Describe the actions you took. What did you do? Exactly. What did you do? What didn't you do? Sometimes that is extremely important. I didn't panic. Uh, you know, uh, we didn't lose any clients uh, and things of this nature. Right. It, it just depends on the nature of the story that you're telling or the nature of the job or the role that you had. Right. So there's the actions results. This is the important part. Member, I was a member of such such a student organization does not give me any results. I had no idea how you made the organization any better as because you were part of it I, I, for all i know you could have joined never went to any meetings and the organization could have been the same before you arrived and it was the same after you left well results tell me that you made a diff difference it tells me you got the job done it tells us you did something right so describe the results what happened what didn't happen what did people say how did everyone involved feel here you go in real time right i'm gonna give this to you all in real time now your story doesn't have to be told in the same order every time I don't care what acronym you use. It doesn't matter. We gave you star because it's easy to remember. Uh, you can say rats. You can start with the results, then get to the action, the task, and the, and the situation or the scenario, right? TARS, ARTS, whatever you want to do, RTSA. I don't, th please do not get caught up into thinking that it has to be in this particular order every time. Sometimes I can make you sound like a robot. I don't tell my stories in the exact order every time, but I can check off each one of these letters. Uh, I've even seen other acronyms like PAR, problem, action, result, right? So